You are now tuned into Freeing the Minds TV, home to mindful living, peace, love, and light. Peace and love, peace and love. Welcome back to www.freeingtheminds.com and the art of peace. The art of peace, where we sit down and we work out a little sketch, freestyle design, freestyle sketch, working out our ideas, using art as a form of meditation to arrive at a peace of mind and arriving at a peace of mind through the journeys of art and creativity. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right on in here. And like we talked about before last time, no determined idea that we enter this thing on with. We enter it in with a free and open mind, open creative point, and ultimately searching for nothing. Searching for nothing, just simply here to express or simply to um, experience the self in the now. Experience the self in the now. So ultimately what we're gonna be doing today is a little bit of automatic illustration. Automatic illustration, very similar to automatic writing, where you're just allowing the impulses of your spirit to go freely onto the page. So without further ado, let's just get straight on into this. Now, today's tools that we're gonna to be using in today's example, we're gonna be using these expressionist um, pastels, the expressionist oil pastels, and then we're also gonna be using these Reeves soft pastels, these Reeves soft pastels. Now, Reeves soft pastels, they can operate very much like charcoal very much like the charcoal, the way they sit down on the page, the way they just blow the dust right off of there, operate very much like the charcoal, where the oily pastels have more of a crayon-y crayon type of feel, more of a crayon-y type of feel. They sit on the page a little bit thicker and in their place, where the wreaths will kind of spread a little bit and smear a little bit more smoother. So without further ado, like we were talking about before, this is gonna be a free automatic illustration. So we're gonna allow ourselves to just ultimately create freely. So let's just see what happens here. And oftentimes, in an open, open space, freeing it up, not sure exactly where I want to start or don't have necessarily a determined idea in mind, I like to just start off with a face. And the thing is about it, since it is an art freestyle, don't necessarily have to lock anything in. We don't have to commit to anything, any one idea, any one place. So don't be a, don't be ashamed. Like when you're going into a free art or a free creative space or automatic writing or automatic illustration, the main objective is to not judge yourself. Allow yourself to express itself. You know, London bridges weren't built overnight. You know, science mathematical skills, talent, all these things takes time to develop. So we never wanna judge ourselves too harshly on anything that we engage ourselves in, especially if it's early in the process of our getting to know what word it is that we're doing in there. Now this nose here is gonna be a nice little sharp one. Still learning my shading and stuff like that. Currently, I'm teaching myself and learning, trying to learn the anatomy of the human body. So it's it's uh, and that in itself, for artists, is a never-ending process. Probably is what it seems to be. I've been studying art pretty much my whole life, and I still have so far to go. One thing I do know and noticed about myself is. With art, art is one of those talents and one of those gifts that if you don't use it, you will lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Meaning like, if you don't continue to practice your art, sharpen and refine your skills, you know what I mean? Learn and further develop your skills and your understanding of your craft. You'll end up finding yourself displaced or obsolete in a market that is ever changing, ever changing. What do I mean, ever changing? Like artists is always creating new worlds. Artists are always offering the world something new through their designs and their creativities and their ideas and ideals, their aspirations, always offering something new to the people. Oftentimes this thing that they offer can be ahead of its time, so to speak, or 
misunderstood upon its initial expression, misinterpreted, mm, misdirected even. Because it's something new, it's figuring out where it belongs, it's figuring out where it goes. So naturally some things will be taken out of context or misdirected. So this is one individual that's just growing in itself, growing into self. Just his shirt that he's putting on. And this man is probably just one individual. He's got his bag. in this bag. What is that bag of? A bag of Ripple, maybe. <laughs> what is Ripple? One might say, oh, this Ripple. I never heard of Ripple. Ripple is ultimately what the old school used to call a drink. Hard drink. Grandpa's old cough medicine. <laughs> and this man is probably just walking back. Boom. Just getting his little bag. About to set up for his afternoon sip. just walking on home. Maybe there's others. Passers by on the street there. got that happening you know this is just the corners on the corner With the burglar bars I'm hitting that burglar bar you got your people corner store stoop walking Maybe over here, it's a whole nother world happening over here. Maybe this is, see now this is where I wanted to go. I wanted to go here with it. The circle of the moon.
It's nighttime. It brings a peace of mind to the body. As I'm sitting here, even just sketching this little night scenery, I'm starting to feel nice. Almost like the mind is relaxing a little bit more into its feel. Now, you still got a lot of stuff happening in the world. Like for example, when you're coming up in this world, you know, coming from this, he's in a tough environment. His environment is very tough. Almost like he blends into his environment. His environment is very tough. It's Brick City. blends into his environment. He almost becomes like he's embedded into it. The walls, they seem insurmountable. You can't get above them, you can't get over them. It's like it's hard to be beyond your environment sometimes. This is ultimately symbolized in how one becomes product of the environment. It's, um, and it's like you go so far, you do so much, you go through so much even, where it just becomes part of you. The buildings, the walls, you become embedded into your world. Embedded into your world. It's hard to determine who's on top. Is your world on top of you or are you on top of your world? Because you become so embedded into it. Like, are you above your scenery? Are you above the mishaps within your community? Can you survive? Who will survive? These becomes the questions in the process of the pursuit of happiness. Where is my joy? Where is my joy? What makes me the most happiest? Who am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? Why are we here? These questions, existential questions, these existential questions always pop up in situations where we find ourselves challenged or we find ourselves being faced with many challenges. And then when these questions pop up, if they're not addressed correctly or appropriately, meaning correctly or appropriately, what do we mean? Anytime we ask ourselves the question, why am I here? What am I doing here? We shouldn't seek to answer that question what am I doing here? We shouldn't seek to answer the question, what am I doing here? We should allow ourselves to be. When we ask ourselves that question, what am I doing here? Then observe, open the mind, open the body, open the spirit, open up to the situation at hand, open up to the situation at hand, open up to the reality happening in front of you. What do I mean by that? I mean this. Be in the moment and embrace the moment without identifying in the moment, meaning. Recognizing what's happening in front of us. Say we go into wherever we go. Life is always wide open, man. Situations, circumstances, anything can happen at any given time. That's just got its, it's got its sway. Like everything has its sway on people. You gotta determine what your influence is here in this world and what you're gonna be influenced by or allow yourself to be influenced by. Are you gonna allow yourself to be influenced by the negativity of your atmosphere or within your environment? Are you gonna allow yourself to be influenced by the positivity, are you gonna look at the negativity as an opportunity to respond with your light and positivity? Or are you gonna look at it as a situation of challenge? And say, you know what, man, 
I got to rise up to this negativity and meet this negativity with more negativity. Like you got to decide what type of person you are in this world. Everyone must decide who they are in this world. And in the process of that defining on who you are, you have to actualize, live it out. Situations and circumstances will come into play which will challenge your identity, challenging yourself to who you think you are versus who you really actually are. And the reality of this whole thing is you are everything and everything is you. Mary J. Blige told us this a long time ago. But it's embracing oneself, it's getting into oneself, it's allowing oneself to unfold. Now this man here is wearing this color purple. Purple being the color of royalty. As shaded as this man is, he's deeply embedded into his environment. And this purple, overlying it all, his clothes. Then he got the bag where his bottle is kept. And you can start to see how it lays in there. And then we have the brownness of the skin, the skin tone. And we want to kind of like hide that in there. Hence, and some skin tone. See, and I like hard lines. Me personally. hands the hands are interconnected these are our tools that connect us to this world allow us to engage with the world the hands allow us to grasp things within reach the hands the hands like the mind are ultimately tools tools that share the same mechanism the body and with these two operating as one So, it's all open, everything is wide open, the building. The building is wide open, the sidewalk wide open for walks. window. The lights on inside there. Now, with these brick walls, the walls, these walls represent ultimately the walls we all must climb in life. How can you climb them? Mortal. The mortal life 
is a temporary life, man. The mortal physical being, who we appear to be versus who we actually truly are in the long run of this thing. The bricks. Ultimately, the walls, this wall represents the walls everywhere. The walls are everywhere in life. Overlapping us, covering us up. The walls are the walls within ourselves, the walls within life itself. The walls with two, the barriers of entry. Walls representing the barriers of entry. Things that we want to engage in, things we want to get into in life. Not everything is always easily accessible. Everything ain't for everybody. Everything ain't for everybody. You got to find out what your belonging is, man. You got to find out what your belonging is. What do I mean by what is your belonging? Things that sit right in your soul. Like. Happiness to one is not necessarily happiness to all for all. Where one finds peace of mind, another person might find great resentment. Moonlight, at times, is our only guiding light. Like, the world is so dense and so dark and so heavy that many times we're not necessarily sure on exactly which way to go. We don't know exactly which way to go. That's when it's like, take a chance, challenge yourself, see what happens. And if by chance you happen to follow through on your dreams, and if by chance you happen to not get single-handedly defeated by the trials and tribulations in life, and if by chance you just so happen to stay true to yourself, you will find yourself flying high above the crowd. Flying high above the crowd. It's a crow. And the crow is often misunderstood, underrated bird. The crow, they say, signifies life and death, which ultimately would signify the spirit world, which ultimately would be a spirit bird. So we shouldn't necessarily look at something, whether it's good or bad, based off of its usefulness, because if we look at life, nature does not produce something useless. Not one thing does nature produce that is useless. Everything that nature produces is useful. Everything has its determined idea, its purpose of creation, our incarnation. So you have scavengers, like certain fish are scavenger fish that go around bottom feeders, eat off the bottom of the earth, doing the garbage disposal. You also have this in space in the cosmos and black holes and stuff like this. They just go around cleaning up the atmosphere, sucking up particles, sucking up elements, sucking up even whole planets and stuff, meteors and all this good stuff. You also have these in life, physical life that go around sucking up negative energy and just adding more positive. And you also have the vice versa of that, the opposite of that, you know what I mean? Sucking up good energy and sending out the negative. So we have these various different polarities, but they all have purposes and access points into life and outside of this life, coming out, coming in and leaving this place. So at these access points, birth, death, this is where we start to get um, some kind of sense of wholeness some kind of sense of completion. For example, being birthed and born into this world and as we continue to grow and develop and as we continue to develop, elevate, 
expand our mind experience expand our experience look at our environment see what's going on around it look into ourselves see what we value look into our heart and our minds and see what we want to pursue and what we want to manifest into this world we start to realize that the past and the present are all connected to our future and with our future we start to see that who we were and who we are and who are we becoming is all a process of becoming one stage one um or one uh a line of progress, a line of prog progress, different points along that line of progress. So when we look at ourselves at any given moment, in any situation, we're facing any challenge, we should never write ourselves off or lock ourselves into this ideal or we find ourselves in defeat, never say I've been defeated because this is just a moment along the point of the process. So though you might be down now, you will be up later. And though you may be up now, you will be down later, only to be back up again. So we don't get caught up in the nowness. We embrace the nowness and we experience the nowness in all its fullness and we open ourselves fully in that nowness, only to embrace it holistically, meaning whatever is happening is happening. What is the conscious mind attuned to in the happening? What are you paying attention to? Is what you're paying attention to positive or is what you're paying attention to negative? Is it creating a positive feeling in you or is it insinuating or instilling a sense of fear inside of yourself, paralyzing one's being? And if we find ourselves in situations where the acts in which we're doing are paralyzing our spirit, paralyzing our soul, paralyzing our movements, then we have found ourselves accepting a false idea. We found ourselves accepting a false reality because anything that's preventing one from growing, moving forward, moving up and moving on beyond. Anything that is stopping one from experiencing this, we realize that we have accepted a lie or a false programming because what in life does not elevate? What in life does not expand? Name one thing that does not grow. Name one thing that does not evolve. Name one thing that does not change. All these things change. That is the nature of life. All these things evolve. This too is the nature of life. So that being the nature of life, change, evolution, we should look at these things around our life, surrounding our lives, be they the bird, be they another individual, be they the bricks and the mortars around our environment. We look at these things merely as tools, expressions of great spirit. The mind itself is a tool. We use the mind. We analyze the mind. We look at the mind. We see through the mind. We look at it, but we analyze the mind. The mind is a tool. Then we utilize the mind and we put it to work. Like, for example, this is what came from the mind through the mind. No predetermined idea, no predetermined anything. I just kind of just let everything go. Colors wanted to come out. Faces wanted to show themselves. And birds wanted to fly high. How I feel right now inside myself, I feel a lot more open. I feel more free and I feel open to do whatever the next task at hand is. I got a lot of creative energies flowing. I got some stuff out of my system. Whatever it is that was on the mind, if there was even anything on the mind at this point in time, I'm in myself. So whatever was wrestling with earlier before that or whatever it was that was on the mind before that, it's no longer heavy as it once was. Art has a tendency to lighten the load. Anytime we find ourselves frustrated or overstimulated or find ourselves like kind of bogged down by society and stuff, get deep into your work, get deeper into your work, for work is a healing thing. The more we work and we work on our labor and we labor on that which we aspire to, it brings its own rewards. It brings its own rewards. Like the more you, like getting closer to that finish line, the closer you get to the finish line, the better you feel. You might not even realize how close you are to that finish line, so you just gotta keep moving. What else are we gonna do? Sit down, sit still, and just chalk it up? Have a pity party or a temper tantrum? At some point in time, that energy even decides, and at some point in time, even we'll get tired of doing that and wanna get up and get moving. So you might as well always just get up and get moving. Whether you feel it or not, whether you feel it inspired or motivated to do a move or not, you just might as well just get up and get moving because um, 
eventually you're going to get up and get moving and you eventually got to get there so why not just keep going take your breaks when you need to help the mind allow the mind to refresh reset itself but this one is uh ultimately what we're looking at you know it's um life presents itself it's up to us to ultimately perceive what's there life life presents itself so in this situation life presents pre that now look at this let's just take a look at this for a second life presents right life pre beforehand sent sent to send something it was done it was sent so pre sent right whatever is present was pre sent whatever is present whatever's there whatever's in the now it was destined to be there it was pre-sent to be here. It was right there. It was sent for you. And it was sent for you and it's pre-sent for there. Therefore, it was a divine destiny that this thing is happening right now. Whatever it is in the present. Whatever it is in the present. Whatever is in the pre-sent. The now moment. It was designed for you and it was prepared for you. And it's exactly what you're eating right now for you to eat. Because that's exactly what was for you to eat. The eating is being the experience being experienced. Whatever it is that you're experiencing at that time. It is supposed to be experienced at that time. How you're experiencing. That's up to you to determine how you're going to use your mind. To experience that thing. How do you use your mind to experience this thing? Sometimes we come at the experience from. And we use fear in the approach to the mind. Or we use fear in the approach to the experience. And we start to fear what's happening right there. Giving birth to anxieties and all this type of stuff. Or even just stepping in in the unknown. No expectations. No anything. Right? And you step on in there. But you remain fortified in your spirit. Knowing that this is a spiritual experience in which you're engaged in. And allowing yourself to look at it from that spiritual point. You'll find a peace. You'll find an acceptance. You'll find an embracing. Because whatever is there in the present was pre-sent. Whatever is there, it was pre-designed. It was designed for you. So, the pre-sent. It was sent ahead of time. It was designed for you. Specifically for your experience. The pre-sent. So now, whatever is in the present is in the now. Whatever is in the present is in the now. And the now is all that we have. We can't jump into the future. We can't go back into the past. So it is whatever's happening now is now. And everything is happening in the now. Whether it's in front of your face or whether it's not. Whether it's happening in your range, in your field, in your frequency. Or it's not outside your frequency and field. So you can't necessarily experience it consciously. But it's happening and it's there. So recognizing where we're at in this life. What frequency are we living on? You know what I'm saying? Not locking ourselves into our environment, not necessarily saying, hey, because I live in this hood or because I live next to this liquor store or because I live into this situation or because my economics won't allow me to get beyond this atmosphere does not determine who you are. You're far greater than any atmosphere. You're far greater than any experience. You're far greater. You are experiencing the experience and you're using the mind to determine that experience or interpret that experience. So the mind, therefore, is a tool being used in the experience, but you're far greater than the mind, too. But the mind plays tricks on us and then we have to get into our own selves and work out the mind or allow ourselves the mind to pass on through the monkey mind meditation. Allow the mind to do its thing only so you can. All right. Now, let me give you this so you can sit there on this, you know, let you let you bounce around so you can get your bouncing stuff out of that system. And then when the mind settles down, now you give it a thought to sit on and marinate and work with. The mind is a tool. All these things and around our environments are ultimately there. The divine destiny presented for us to experience and enhance the experience. To take our souls to the next level. Elevate our spirits, elevate our minds, elevate our beings. So this is ultimately a reflection of that. The wildness and the chaotic states in which we see in life is not necessarily who we are. Nor does it determine who or define our tribal. Our journey. No, they're just markings along the way. They are ultimately merely tools in the making all divinely present all divinely pre-created all divinely set into your experience for your experience you utilize this to enhance yourself and you can utilize this to enhance yourself by engaging or disengaging and distance and detaching from but either way whether you do this or you do that there's an add-on that's happening what direction are you traveling is the question so 
these are the things that we have to determine for our own self with our own self and in our own self so this is ultimately a reflection of that i believe this piece right here is pretty much done for today i think it's done this is done for right now so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and sign this one on up right on down at the bottom this is definitely an untitled piece and um that's it man life presents everything how do you determine how do you define what do you define how do you see it we see these three people on the ledge over the roof overlooking the city looking out upon it kind of like looking at it you know but um either way it goes we have to define for our own selves who we are where we're going what this journey is to us and um where we're at in the process of it that being said i want to say thank you again for tuning on into the art of peace this is another episode and um you know this is life this is life and that's ultimately a reflection on what it is man a divine journey predetermined predestined all of which we experience in the process and the unfolding of our own lives all in the now remembering our past thinking of our futures realizing it now deciding who we want to become in our futures and starting to practice that now so that by the time we get there then we will be there what we imagine now we will be then it's all present man Present, predetermined, predetermined, pre-sent, pre-delivered. So therefore, if it's pre-delivered, all we got to do is just live out the story. This is the script of your own life. This is where your life becomes the greatest story. And the greatest story is your life. So experience, live vibrantly, dynamically experience this world and all that it has to offer. Do not define yourself based off your environment. Do not define yourself even based off of your own thoughts. You're far greater than anything that you could even think that you are. Mm. Mm. That being said, I wish you nothing but love, light, peace, harmony. Check out these shirts. On our website, www.freeingthemind.com. This one here is a I Love Amethyst Crystals shirt. I Love Amethyst Crystals. We also have the I Love Lemurians. We got a whole bunch more. Tourmalines coming up. All type of crystal crystal shirts coming up. So, um, But we got a few up on there already, as well as like some art design shirts, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff on there. But just check it out, www.freeingthemind.com. Thank you again for tuning on into the Art of Peace. Wish you nothing but love and light, peace and prosperity this week. All love to you. Peace and love, y'all. Peace. Visit www.freeingtheminds.com for your unique, original Freeing the Minds merchandise and apparel. 